the body of Christ's immune system. Catholic, defend your church. I am speaking with firmness and determination, defending my Catholic Church, adhering to the faith of my hysterium, and therefore I am acting against the evil that is within it. Never in our history has the Church had so many enemies as in these times. Aside from the external enemies such as Freemasonry and Communism, the Catholic Church suffers with ecclesiastical Freemasonry, liberation theology, modernism and new doctrines that attempt to bring down the Church of Peter. In the face of such attacks, it is necessary for true Catholics to claim the right to continue in the faith guaranteed by the 2,000-year tradition. But the enemy has entered our Church. The iron door is close to criticism or correction. The authoritarianism of the Church hierarchy does not allow dialogue to discuss the heresies that are being promulgated about the idolatry that is reigning and about the sinister plans to convert the Church of the Savior into a religion more compatible with the modern ideas of this perverse civilization. Many are blind to the reality that Jorge Mario Bergoglio is not the Pope. They treat him as if he were Peter, but they must understand that the time has come for the prophecies about the man of iniquity to be fulfilled. The Church has been betrayed. Judas is in action. The Church has been mortally wounded by the decline of respect and worship due to the presence of God reigning in his mystical body through the sacraments and the supposed holiness of all consecrated priests. The sexual disorder of so many cardinals, bishops, and priests seriously offends God. The watered-down message of the gospel is a mockery of the gospel of Jesus that must necessarily begin to by proclaiming repentance and conversion. The gospel that preaches prosperity, peace, tranquility, and assurance of salvation, simply by belonging to the Church, is a lie that offends God. The true message of the gospel is to touch the hearts of all Catholics and move them to repentance and conversion. But what is heard is the illusionism that is being preached as false mercy. The notion that we are all God's children is a lie because we are only God's children in Jesus Christ our Lord, the Word of God who became incarnate and was made man. John 1 verse 12 to 13 But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. To them only, these were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. It is false to preach that we are all children of God, just as it is false to assume that by the mere fact of being baptized as Catholics, we are already saved. Mark 16, verses 15 to 16, he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So, if anyone is baptized but does not believe, he will be condemned. It is the Word of God. It is very heretical to say no to proselytism because this is contradicting the Word of God. Because Jesus wants everyone to hear the good news that He is Lord and Savior. Being baptized allows us to enter into the body of Christ, to be filled with the light of Christ, and to participate in the sanctifying grace that saves us. But Jesus demands that we be baptized and believe. 
Baptism is then a commitment to believe and live the Christian life away from sin. When we live in sin, we lose the privilege of being called children of God because we lose that power that Christ gives us to be children of the Father. This is why repentance and conversion are necessary and continue to be the pillars of the Christian life. Today, we are hearing many heresies that confuse the Church. Ever since the phrase, who am I to judge, was heard, the Church has lost the right to preach against sin, because sin crucified Christ, and not to preach against it, is to give the green light to the devil. Bergoglio has desecrated our religion by welcoming homosexuals and adulterers, by using his ecclesiastical power in the exhortation Amoris Laetitia. It is an approval of immorality. It is a challenge to God by revoking the Sixth Commandment. Laudato Si is a Pandora's box full of demons that is open to Catholics by making use of the fear of global warming it is a promotion of idolatry, because it teaches to worship Mother Earth, to share the vulgarity of the Pachamama, instead of repenting and asking God to heal the evils of the earth. Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. So we have evil within our Holy Mother Church, and so we have every right to protest. A good Catholic has to say no to all these heresies of Bergoglio. He cannot feel so secure as to reach papalism. The evidence calls us to have discernment of the spirits, Silence concedes and makes us accomplices of evil. It is not enough to pray and suffer. We have to act. A good Catholic has to say no to the modern churches that are being imposed on us, such as communion in the hand, priests with masks or gloves at the altar, social distancing from the members of the body of Christ, masks in the presence of Christ, Total obedience to governments that united with Satan try to mock God. Dear Catholic brother, sister, the body of Christ is dying because of this cancer that overwhelms it within the hierarchy of the Church. If we remain silent like dumb dogs or for the sheep, we will continue in this Judas boat that will be shipwrecked in the waters of corruption. We have to activate ourselves as cells of the immune system of the body of Christ. If we remain silent, we are giving our souls to Satan. It is time to act. If you like this video, please give us a like. Subscribe to our channel, The Work of God. Share on social networks. And don't forget to leave your valuable comments. How did you like this reflection? God bless you.